Okay, so it's chamfering time, or bevelling time, or whatever the hell you want to call it. So, first of all, uh, well, no first of all really, let's just get started. Easiest place to start really is with our um, round areas. What I mean is uh, basically these pieces here, yeah? We can then set off a loop. Which will select all these pieces for us. So that's kind of one less thing for us to have to really kind of get involved in. Oops. Uh, change this to the move tool rather than the move and select. Uh, the select tool rather than the select and move tool. Okay, and that's about it really for the places that I can select here. Yeah, it is. So if I just. Uh, Maybe here. Just do a loop. Okay, so now we're started. We can get busy. Woohoo! So down here. And this will make a big difference to our model, the chamfering part. Um, what we're doing really, I suppose, and I'll try and explain this whilst I'm concentrating on finding parts that should be chamfering at the same time, which isn't easy. Um, what we're doing is, for anyone who doesn't kind of realise why we chamfer, um, 3D is not the same as clay, as you know. So ignore back facing, make it easy. It's not the same as clay in the slightest, in that you make something in 3D um, that's got an edge, like these. The edges are literally two planes that meet, and as the two planes are infinitely thin, because this is 3D and it's not calculating the other side, unless you build the other side and render the other side, these edges, as they are infinitely thin, are not going to reflect light correctly. What I mean by this is, if you look at a render that someone has done when you know they're just setting off, even if you just look at the APU renders, because I couldn't chamfer all the APU in the tutorial because it was really long. But um, if you look at someone who's, you know, not chamfered a model that's got lots of mechanical detail in it, like for example this, uh, I'm not doing these top bits, um, you'll see that, I mean it looks okay, but it looks like a CAD drawing in a sense. Um, the light isn't picking up on the corners correctly. Now what we're doing by kind of building all these little chamfers is we're building a place for light to reflect off because in reality when you get a big or even a thin piece of metal and you bend it at 90 degrees to itself um, so you get a 90 degree corner there is in fact not a perfect bend what I mean by that is if you go in nice and close and look with your eye, or even if you've done it really precisely, look with a microscope, there will still be an area which can pick up light. It will not be a perfect 90 degree seam. And we're relying on that in order to get our light to correctly kind of bounce off these edges. Now, you know, I understand if you don't have a flipping clue what I'm talking about, um, but I'll try and show you in just a minute once I've done these chamfers. Well, these aren't chamfers, are they? These are preparations for chamfers. So I'll just go around the model. Still. There we are. I'm not talking much because this is a real kind of concentrating on the clicking bit. Anyone who thinks I go back and record audio, you have to be bloody kidding me. Yeah, I can try and imagine recording like 10, 12, 20, 40 hours of video tutorial. And then, once you've done it all, imagine going back and doing the audio. It's an absolute nightmare. I mean, a lot of tutorial authors, funnily enough, have copied of what I do. Um, I've seen a few of them that kind of do the ad hoc stuff. God bless them. They can't talk as much as I can. But. And um, 
really for the longer sets I mean you can prepare all you want but when it comes down to it it's the same as if you're in front of a classroom of pupils you've kind of got to perform there and then you can't just kind of point at stuff and just get on with what you're doing and expect people to know what you're doing you've got to kind of explain what you're doing so that is why I'm being quiet a lot of the time whilst I'm trying to work out exactly what the hell I'm kind of doing in this piece and this piece and that piece and blah 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 Fortunately, a lot of it I can kind of work out quite easily, but some of them you've got to work out, is the angle going to be kind of sharp enough to warrant putting a chamfer on? If it's yes, then where are we going to put it? And so on. I mean, that angle at the back there is quite sharp, for example, just there. This one's definitely sharp enough, as is this one. Flip it round, though, because you've got to make sure you do the other side. three d graphics in the way that I'm doing it at the minute is very much a kind of visual thing. I mean, if you're doing CAD, then that's a whole different ball game altogether, and you have my utmost respect because it's a very difficult field. But for what we're doing, which is building exciting fantasy weapons, uh, it's not the same thing at all. And in this one, I tend to use a lot of by eye judgment and snap decisions. I really quite like this shape here. What's ironic is I've got this all out on paper in front of me and when I'm done I'm going to actually use the renders as my reference um, images that I'll supply for the uh, video tutorial. So. Uh, even though I ended up with kind of this slightly bent out of shape rear piece here by accident, it doesn't really matter because I'll still be using it. Hello, what's going on here? Is there a hole inside the model or something? fix this up. What is going on here? I'm going to have to come back to that because I don't want to lose my uh, verts that I've been selecting. Actually no, I will go and deal with it now. as well. This thing to do really is just delete these ones off. Strange business. This is interesting. I always love it when you end up with loads of weird bits that make no sense. That are just sitting in the middle of your model for no apparent reason. Now let's see if we can get this bloody thing put back together again. Okay. 
Okay, because I had to do some repairs there, I actually had to uh, go back and basically redo quite a bit of this um, selecting. Now, I know I don't pause very often, but as you just watched me do all this bloody selecting, I didn't really think you'd want to see me do it for another nine minutes. Call me kind of Mr. Cruel if you want, but uh, no, I just didn't think it'd be something you'd enjoy. So, anyone who does want, you know, another nine minutes of watching me champ for stuff, then please just, uh, if you rewind, and then, uh, you know, you'll be able to do it again as many times as you want. Sorted. I'm just going to add this into a selection class, just so I can do a quick uh, fix over here. I'm not sure why this is not in the right place. Quick manual thing will sort it out. There we are. Right, and um, back into here again. It doesn't matter that it's uneven, particularly, um, simply because even though things look symmetrical, they really are. Even enormous military cannon things. So, a good example of that was the Spanish Navy, actually, which is one of the reasons we won. If you're not British, you won't understand that reference. There we are. Okay, just looking that over, and another one here. And there. It's last minute kind of repairs and fixes to the mesh. Whilst doing our selections. There we go. And also looking for areas that are selected that shouldn't be, incidentally. Okay, that looks fine. So now I'm going to take a risk and hit the magical chamfer button. And obviously one's too many, even though it looks comical. So let's just bring that down until we get something we can manage. Which will be about 0 0.2. Click OK. Now I'm going to try and work out why I've got this mystery arrow suddenly appearing. I think I know actually, I think that's part of the uh, lower section. So what I'll do is I'll just go out of that and just push it down a bit so it's out of the way. Yep, that was the inner barrel. Okay, now a little bit of straightening up needs to be done over here, so I'll go to my top viewport. And select by element this one, then control I, so I've got the other bit selected. And then I can just slide it along a little bit, like that. Okay, leap back into perspective. And you can see the difference the lighting on the edges is making now. That bit's needing to be closed, but I can do that quite easily. Cap it. And over there, it looks like we've got some sort of a polygon error going on, so I'll just delete that. I really can't be asked with polygon errors. Do a quick create. And now if I stick a border in there, I should get the right polygon at last. Now I can do a cap, not a cap, sorry, a cut. And there, across to there. And that means I can now select this edge here. Bring it forward, and I've made a manual chamfer. And now we can see how it looks on its stand as well. Remember, that's only one of them, we're doing three. Okay, that looks fine. 
Okay, so I'll see you in the next part. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.